Paz de Cristo, Dios le bendiga en esta hermosa tarde. Lo saluda su hermano, su amigo José Cervantes. Y uh, queremos dar este estudio, ¿verdad? Como lo hemos estado haciendo. Um, esperamos que este día, ¿verdad? Que el Señor nos ha permitido. Pues uh, usted esté ahí tal vez descansando en su casa o en su carro, ¿verdad? Tal vez nos está escuchando o nos va a escuchar. Yo le mando una bendición de parte de la Iglesia de Cristo Camino de Santidad de Portland, Oregon. Y es un gusto estar aquí con ustedes, um, tomar esta tarde, ¿verdad? Y, y abrir la palabra del Señor para ver cuál es el consejo que hoy podemos recibir. Um, como lo he estado haciendo, ¿verdad? Voy a enfocarme el mensaje, lo vamos a dar en inglés, ¿verdad? Ya que parece que hemos recibido, ¿verdad?, comentarios, respuestas de que los hermanos a nuestra la palabra de Dios, porque solamente cuando la entendemos es cuando la podremos recibir. Y en estos últimos días, ¿verdad? El Señor ha puesto en mi corazón el hablar en el idioma en el cual yo también me siento más a gusto hablándolo. Es por eso que hemos estado pidiéndole al Señor que nos dé palabra y nos ayude para bendecir a los jóvenes o las jóvenes que hablan el inglés, ¿verdad? So, con haber dicho eso, ¿verdad? Quiero enfocarme a la audiencia en inglés. So, God bless you today. I pray that um, you're tuning in, whether it be through YouTube or Facebook. Um, I just want to bless you in the name of Jesus this afternoon. Um, you've taken time out of your busy schedule, maybe, you know, your busy day or whatnot, and you're giving a few minutes to meditate and to read the Word of God with us. And all we want to do is just be an encouragement to you guys. We want to open up this book, and maybe you haven't taken the time lately to, you know, have this, this time with the Lord. And there's nothing like So that's our biggest... Um, That's our biggest objective, you guys. We just want to reach out. We want to see what God is trying to tell us in these days that we're living in. And I want to begin by sharing a scripture with you guys. Um, I've got quite a few scriptures to share with you guys. So like I said, um, you know, we're, we're trying this, uh, this new thing. Um, like, like I said it last week, you know, I, I feel like our brothers cover, you know, most of the week with the with the messages dedicated to our Spanish speaking viewers. And I feel like if I'm able to speak English and you know, be able to reach a little bit more, um, the younger generation or those that don't speak English, uh, Spanish as fluent, uh, then the Lord I, I think has called me to do that. And uh, I want to do it with all my heart. What we're talking about today is the new creation or the new. I got this topic from uh, a young brother that I was talking to yesterday. Um, I want to give a shout out to my brother Pepe. If you're going, if you're going to hear this, or if you're going to, you know, listen to it in the future, you know, God bless you, my young brother, and I, and I, um, I expect this to be a blessing to you. Um, so he had this, uh, he had this topic, right? That he asked me, you know, how can we explain what new creation is? Like, how do we explain what God has done in us without sounding like, you know, like uh, we just got brainwashed or whatever? Um, typically when somebody talks about change or when somebody talks about being different, one of the first things that people start trying to say is, oh, they already washed your head, right? In Spanish, it's very common to hear, oh, ya te lavaron, ya te lavaron la cabeza. Or, by every little, every little teaching that they, that they receive. I want to open up the book, the, the word of God with you and actually take you to scripture and see what God has to say. This isn't, um, you know, a, a, a human teaching. This isn't what man want to teach. But I believe with all my heart that this is what God is trying to teach us. When we come to know Christ, we begin a new journey, you guys, a, a new journey, you guys. When we give our lives to Christ, we believe that he died on a cross. We believe that he hung on that cross for our sins. And not only did he die on that cross, but he got buried in the tomb. And all 
to keep trying to reach the new the new creation you know the 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 new height the uh, the new standard you could say and i want to take us through scripture and i want to share with you guys these verses and i want to talk about them because it the overall message that i see when we come to know christ when we allow and when we ask god jesus to enter our heart and he lives inside of us it's a new journey that we're beginning it's like the 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 next chapter of our lives that's how i'm able to understand it so um the title that we put onto this uh message is uh, a new man or uh un nuevo foundation on what we're going to be talking about so ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to be uh, taking a look at verses 17 and on. So um, if you got your Bibles, I'm going to ask you guys to open up the word with me and uh, go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. And uh, really quickly before I get into this, you know, it's, um, it's, my, it's my duty as a... As a man that speaks the word of God, as a, as a person that tries to, um, I think it's really important to take you through my own experiences, through my own testimony, what God has done in me, and I'll, I'll you know, throw it in there too within the message that we're going to be giving, because God has done a new, a new, a new, uh, he's given me new life. I've been, I'm a living testimony that God raises people from the dead and not only raises them and says, okay, you know, I brought you back to life. Now go ahead and keep living how you want. No, but when God gives us new life, when he raises us from our death, from, from uh, brought out of the world, I consider myself born again. That's the term that we uh, tend to use, right? When we talk about, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a born again believer, being born again. But what do you mean by being born again? Um, being born again, to me, that's the essence of a Christian. You know, if you're not born again, that means you're still living with the same kind of attitude, with the same kind of um, practices, with the same kind of lifestyle that you had, then you aren't a new man. Right? And if it isn't something better, then why, 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 pers why pursue it? Why go after it? But I promise you that the word of God is nothing short than glorious. And what we find in, in, the, in, in this book right here, it's life. It's life to our soul. Like those times that you feel like you're down, like you feel like, like you're empty. The word of God is there to minister you. The word of God will lift you up when you feel like nobody is there to help you. So Ephesians chapter 4 verse. And testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness I'm going to keep reading but I want to break this down what we just read it's, it's just so much I want to try to understand as much as we can so it begins by saying Verse 17, it says, Paul is writing and he's saying, I'm writing this to testify and to let you guys know that when we come to know God, then when we come, when we are in the Lord, he's talking about people of faith. He's talking about people that have come to know a faith in God. It says, I testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Let me, let me, let me sit on this for a minute. When it talks about Gentiles, we have to understand what it's talking about. So if we go back to, to when this book was written, it was written, it was written to the children of Israel. Israel. 
a lot of descendants. That's where the children of Israel come from. The Jewish people come from the line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right? So this was God's special people. And all throughout scripture, we see that God would always come and rescue, would always come and, and, and save, would always come and try to like woo, try to like have this people fall in love with them. And many times the children of Israel didn't really want to follow God. They followed off, you know, after different things. But when it talks about right here, Gentiles, it's talking about not the children of Israel. It's not talking about God's special people. It's talking about the people that lived outside. Anybody, any outsider outside of the, of, of the Jewish people was considered a Gentile. Anybody that had idols or like we look. Right. When. Uh, went after other gods, they they didn't know the one true God of Israel. They didn't know the God of the Bible. It was people outside of, of the special people of God. And it goes on to say that you shouldn't live any longer. You shouldn't walk. You shouldn't live your life like the rest of the of the Gentiles, like the world outside of Christ lives. You know, that's a that's a term that we understand, right? Uh, when you when you are a Christian, when you live in the Christian home, you know a lot of the things is is uh, labeled as the world, right? Like very worldly. What does that mean? Well, the word right here, Gentiles, is referring to a worldly idea, a worldly mentality. It's pretty much trying to tell us the world is what we were out. A statue. When we think of a foreign god. You know, and you might you might imagine the little you know statue or the little image or whatever, but in reality, an idol was anything that you worshipped higher than the only true living God, Jehovah, or Jesus, as we come to know Him now. And so it says right here, the Gentiles were people that went after other gods. It was it was a people that didn't want the God of this Bible. So when he goes on to say, Paul is speaking to 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 us, and it says right here. We should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. What is that trying to say? We shouldn't walk the way that we used to walk. You know, and if, if before coming to Christ, we used to, I mean, I could give examples, you know, some people might not agree with everything, but the way that I understand it in my own, in my own life, okay, I was an alcoholic, I was a drugs and these 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 crazy things right a lot of the people do i mean you can't you can't go to a middle school or a high school without smelling something in the air or without seeing people you know that are doing things that they're not supposed to be doing and it says right here don't walk like the rest of the people walk like the world walks don't don't be don't find yourself practicing the same things that the world practice Okay, like I said, I speak for myself. You know, you might say, oh, well, drinking ain't bad or whatever ain't bad. Okay, I'm I'm not here to to, to judge. I'm not here to, to tell you, well, if you're going to do this, you know, you, you're going to go to hell. No, I'm not trying to say that. I'm trying to tell you what the word of God says. It says right here, don't walk as the, as the Gentiles walk. Don't, don't behave like the rest of the world behaves. That's what it's telling us. If, in, if before we were thieves, uh, that's, a, that's another good one, right? If before we were liars, somebody it's not about brainwashing unless you consider coming to christ and being washed clean by the blood of jesus then yes that's the kind of brainwashing that we're talking about you see when you come to know christ it's not that you're being reprogrammed it's not that you're being like uh how would you say this you're not being you could say brainwashed in a bad way no you're being brainwashed in a good way. You're being clean. You're being purified from your evil mind. Because let's be real. Most of us, most of us throughout the day, we fail God even with our thought. Right? And that's what God is here to, to, to cleanse us from. That's what God is trying to have us be doing less of. You know, when we come to, to, to Jesus, when we give our lives to Jesus, I'm going to 
compare it to scripture to see what God says about my feeling. What does God say about my thought? What does God have to say about the way that I'm living my life, that I'm doing this, that I'm doing that, right? So it says right here, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. It's saying that the people outside of God, the world as, as we can, as we know it, the world, they don't want anything to do with God. They actually think that God is, is like an imaginary thing. It says right here, in the futility of their mind, they have, they have hardened their mind. God, it says right here, don't walk like the rest of the people do. Don't act like the workers at work do. You know, it's telling you don't behave the way that the world behaves. It says why? Because in their mind, they believe themselves to be correct. It says the futility of their mind. It's saying in their mind, their, their mind is hardened. Their mind is seared as with a hot iron. They have no conscience. Having their understanding darkened. This is the people of the world. The people that don't allow God to regenerate them. The people that don't allow God to create in them, give them a new heart, give them a new mind. It says right here, these people have their understanding darkened. They, they don't judge righteously. They don't make decisions righteously. Why? Because they're darkened. If they don't have the light that is Jesus Christ, you're not going to be able to see what's in front of you. You're going to be walking in darkness, not being able to tell which Have, be associated with God. This is the kind of people that don't want anything to do with God. And if you're a Christian, that this is not you. If you're a Christian, you want everything to do with God. If you have come to know Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, you're putting Him on the altar of your heart. You're putting Him over everything. So this is speaking about a people that don't want anything to do with God. It says that their mind has been darkened. Their understanding, they... It's a, it's like cloudy in their, in their, in their thought. They can't really admit that the people that this is talking about, the world, they are the ones that push themselves away. They alienate themselves from God. They don't even want to come close to God. Why? Because once you come to, once you come to Christ, once you come to God, the light, right? God is light. There is no evil. There's no darkness in him. It says that. The people that are walking in darkness, they don't want to come close because their darkness is going to be. You got to stop doing that. And people like that don't want to submit themselves. They don't want to follow. They don't want to obey. Right. From the beginning, that's what led up to Adam's disobedience. They wanted to do opposite of what God had told them. God told Adam, you could have any fruit from any any tree in, in the in the in the garden that that you see except for one you know maybe there was a ton of trees but just one God told them don't come near that one don't eat from its fruit because the day that you he didn't know that you know in, in that garden before Adam sinned I can imagine you know what it would have been like to have that communication that that intimacy with his maker with his God right Adam must have lived fully satisfied because any problem he had God was right there any 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 trouble that he had with animals God was right there to, to tell him what to do to talk to him right it's not until Adam disobeyed God then he got cut off from God and that's what happened. as soon as we come close to the light our evil is going to be exposed that's what it's saying right here it says, having their understanding darkened, they're being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. See the condition of, of the heart when you're not walking with God, when you're far away from God, you have a heart that is hardened, that is like stone, a heart that doesn't feel, a heart that doesn't love, a heart that doesn't know what is love, right? It says right here, they alienate them people that don't to follow God they're choosing to, to because they're blinded they can't see clearly 
that's the image that I see when I try to when I try to talk to somebody that doesn't know God. You know, I just see like like they can't see clearly, right? But when you come to know God, it's like the, it's like that bandage, like like those like that blindness just like comes off. It just kind of like come off. Let's keep reading. It says right here in verse 19. Who being past feeling that they don't even feel anymore. Their, their, their feeling is like. Come to God because they're scared to be exposed of the evil. It says right here. They don't even have any more feeling. They themselves have lost. It's talking about our evil desires. It's talking about our wrong passions that we have, right? Verse, verse 20 says, But you have not so learned Christ, what Christ represents. Jesus, hatred, right? It's telling us right there very clearly, that's not what you're learning from Christ. If you actually know Christ, you would know that he is sinless, that he is all love, that he is perfect in all his ways, that his word is better than the sinners because he had dinner with the same sinners that he came to save. So we could see in Christ humility, we can see in Christ love, we can see in Christ just fullness. Everything that we could ask for is in Jesus. Come to know him. I invite you today, open up your heart and allow Jesus Christ to do the work in you. It's not about us, it's not about me following a certain rule. It's not about me even, right? Obstacles in our lives. He helps us deny the things that we shouldn't be following. Let's keep reading verse 21. It says, if indeed you have heard him, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. It says, if you have really come to know God, as if you have really come to know Jesus, key here is knowing Jesus. The key here is knowing this God. He is truth. And it goes on to say, if indeed you have heard him, have heard who? Christ, his word. If you have heard his word, it's his word that transforms you. It's his word that changes your heart. It's his word that takes off that bandage from your eyes, that, that blindness and allows you to see. It's the word of Christ. It says, if you have heard him and you have been taught by him, the spirit of God is the one that, that teaches us. The spirit of God is the one that leads us. When you come to give your life to Christ, when you give your life to Christ, that was going to lead us and teach us all things about God. And without the Spirit of God, we cannot be saved. Without the Spirit of God, we cannot know God. We can't have that intimate relationship if it's not the Spirit of God connecting us. The Spirit of God is what connects us. It's what brings us together. It says right here, verse 21. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, Verse 22 says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. It says, if you have come to know this Jesus, if you have learned from this Christ, if you have learned from his truth, if you have come to realize that stop acting the way that you were acting, you got to stop giving yourself to the things that you used to give yourself to. I mean, like I said, I could give examples, but we know what those things are. We know what things don't please God. We know what things please God. We know what upsets God. We know what saddens God. We do. We're in our hearts. God placed something. God placed into each one of us. You know, some people might call it conscience. Some people might call it the spirit of God. But whatever it is that you call it, God placed it in each one of us to know right from wrong. We all know what's right from wrong. You know, but let me tell you, there will come a day when we're gonna leave this corruptible, this, 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 this skin, this, this flesh, we're gonna leave it and we're gonna be glorified and we're gonna go up to heaven and be with Christ. If you are in him, if you are a new creation, 
if you have given your life to Jesus and are walking in his ways, if you're trying to walk according to him, not according to your own self, not what I want to do, not not how I feel. No, 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 no. What does God want you to do? How does God want you to act? How does God want you to respond when, you're, when your coworker is getting on your nerves? How does God want you to respond when that other classmate is, is, is making fun of you or, or, or talking bad about you? What does God want you to do? Not what is me. What do I want to do, you know? Yeah, my coworker. Off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. It's saying that the old man, our, our old desires, the way that we used to be. I mean, maybe I'm just speaking for myself. But it's saying right here that before we used to be people that were evil, practiced evil. Every thought that we had was of lustful thinking, of evil desire, trying to maybe come up on somebody. Maybe, uh, you know, looking at a woman lustfully, maybe, uh, you know, thinking perverted thoughts, maybe actually acting wrong. Like I said, there's examples, but I'd rather not get into that. So I'll keep reading. It's 83. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Where is the challenge? My war is not against the person next to me. My war is not even against my coworkers. A lot of times my war is within my own mind. A lot of times, if not most of the time, my biggest battle is within my own mind. It's saying right here, what do we have to do? It says we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We have to let the, the spirit of God renew our mind. That's what it's telling us. There's a verse that says that we have to not let the world control us or we sh we're not we're not to be flow just like the world is flowing but we have to renew our minds with the word of god we have to allow the, this word right here that we're trying to read to you we have to allow this word to, to to be the filter of our minds that's how i understand it thought of jesus should be in our mind like is this really what god wants me to do is, is, is this really going to be pleasing to God or is it just pleasing me or is it just doing me or is it just because I feel like, you know, this is right. But it says right here, we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, the mind. Once we're able to clean our mind, like a lot of people say, wash our, our, our mind clean, then we'll be able to know what God wants from us. But if we're caught up in our own evil, if we're caught up in our own lust, if we're caught up in our own ways, we're never going to understand or even hear what God has to say. It's like I tell my kids sometimes, why does God give us two ears and one mouth, but to hear better than to speak less, right? You ever think about that? Why is it that we have only one mouth and two ears? It's maybe because God wants us to be better hearers instead of better speakers, right? And it's telling us right here, we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We have to hear the word of God. We have to hear our God. We have to listen to the word of God. Instructions. I can't do anything. I can't buy anything, you know, and open it without reading the instructions first. I don't know why I do that, but that's the kind of person I am. Is your eternity something worth you understanding how to get to? Or, or, or taking serious? Is your eternity serious? That's the question that I want to leave with you tonight. Is where you're going to end up for an eternity worth it? Is it serious? Are you really going to take where your eternity is going to, is going to take you? Do you really care about it? Because if you don't, then you're just going to open up your box, look at the manual and say, eh, throw it. Toss it. I don't really care about the manual. I don't care about the instructions. I can, I can find my way. No. Without God, we're not able to, to, to reach heaven. Without God, we're not able to reach everlasting life. Without Jesus Christ, we're not able to make it to heaven, you guys. Jesus is the only way. He's the only truth. And He's the life that we need. So let's keep reading right here, you guys. It says, verse 24. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God. See, God is the one that is 
the one that is in the business of creating new people it says we have to put on the new person the new the new man and i mean you might be listening and saying well i'm not a man i'm a girl okay well the new woman is telling us right here the new person is telling us right here. maybe before we used to be called a thief maybe before we used to be called endless things but when we come and we find a new identity when we're born again into into jesus christ he gives us a new identity he no longer looks at our, our, our fallen nature, but through the sacrifice, he sees us as our as his beloved. He sees us as his most precious creation. See, it blows my mind when I think about creation. Why God did what he did. You know, why did God take those six days that Genesis talks about? Why did God go through all that trouble to make everything that we're able to see for the enjoyment of his of the pinnacle of his creation, which is you and I. You know, God took so much care of, of, of preparing uh, the trees, preparing the plants, preparing animals, preparing all of creation for you and I. See, we're the center of his creation. We were made in his image. You and I were made in the image of God. And it says this right here. So when we come to know Jesus, and when we come to hear his word and we when we believe his word it says then we will we will be renewed in the spirit of our mind our mind is going to be washed clean yes we are brainwashed in a sense yes we are washed clean i no longer have those bad thoughts i no longer struggle with those addictions i no longer walk according to the flesh it says that we put on the new man which, which was created according to God. And see, that's that's the special thing here. It doesn't require your, your own strength necessarily. Because when you have that connection with God, it's God's strength in you. God's the one that begins the work and he perfects it. It says, the scripture says that the one who started a good work in you is going to finish it. He's going to perfect it. If God started something in your heart, if God sparked a little light in your heart, he's going to make sure to finish it as long as we keep close to him, as long as we stay trying to come after him. You know, it's really hard for God to do to reach our heart if we turn around and we say, I don't want you. It's really hard for God to reach us. But when we come and we realize that we need him, we open up our heart. God says, and I could do something. I could actually do something with this person. I could take them to the next to the next level. I can take them to, to the next glorious stature that he needs to be at. So I want to keep reading this. It says that we put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Righteousness and holiness. See, those are descriptions of what God is. When we think of a righteous judge, when we think of righteousness, it's right standing with God. You know, because... When we realize that we are sinners, that we can't amount to anything if it's not Jesus helping us, when we realize that Jesus died so that we wouldn't have to be punished for, for our transgressions, for our iniquities, that's why Jesus hung on that cross. Jesus hung on that cross. He hung on that cross and he died and he, and he took the punishment of our sin. And he did it because he loved us. He did it because he wanted us to change. He wanted us to be different. He didn't want us to keep walking. You know, Jesus came to save us. And Jesus came to show us grace and love and mercy, something that we don't deserve. But just because we are living under His grace, that doesn't mean that we're supposed to be free to live about however we want. That's not it, you guys. When we give our lives to Christ, we're actually saying, God, I hand over my life to you. When we give our life to God, we're saying, God, all my ideas, all my passions, all my thoughts, all my wants, all my desires, they're yours. You take them. See, when we give our life to Christ, it's a commitment that we got to make. Because Jesus died for us. He died for each one of us. 
are we going to live for him? Are we going to give our life to him? Are we going to say, Jesus, here's my life. Use it for whatever you want. Because that's really the invitation that we're getting, you guys. That's really what I'm trying to help us see. That when we come to Christ, when we come to know this God, of, this God of love, he transforms us. He changes us. A great image that I like to use, that I like to, that, that, that I like to share, is this one. So say, say I'm driving down the freeway, doing like 65 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. I don't know what the speed limit might be where you're at. But if I'm just driving down the freeway, and all of a sudden, I pull over on that freeway, on that busy freeway road. If I pull over my car and I get out of my car and if I step onto the middle of the freeway and there's a big semi that's coming doing 65, 75, I don't know, miles per hour and hits me. If that semi trailer hits me doing 65 miles an hour, am I going to be unchanged? Is my appearance going to remain the same? Am I going to be able to get up, brush off my shoulder and say, oh, that's going to leave a mark? No. That semi is going to completely change my appearance. I'm no longer going to be the same person. I'm, I'm not going to be, I might even not be alive. How much more impact can the God, the creator of the universe have over our lives? Is a semi truck more powerful than the one who made everything? No. The creator of heaven and earth is he's he's got ultimate power. He's got endless ability. He's got understanding that we can't even understand. That it's just it's just we can't even we can't even begin to grasp. So what is it? Is that semi stronger than the God that we believe in? No. God, we might not talk the same way, but it's because God's doing something in us. It's the spirit of God that's transforming us. It's not our own strength. It's not our own ability. It's not because, oh, I've read enough scripture. Now I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, a, I'm a certain person. No, it's the spirit of God, that, the one that transforms us, that changes us. But it does take an effort. It does take an effort from our part. We could easily just turn around and say, oh, I'm done with this. I don't want this. But if you're truly, if you truly, truly want God, if you truly, truly want to go after God, you're going to say, even if it kills me, let me follow you. Let me leave everything that, that, I, that, that, that is just slowing me down. Let me just give you everything, God. Whatever is slowing me down, just take it. I don't want it. And that's really what, what God is offering us, a new life, a new life. You're tired of being depressed. You're tired of having these evil thoughts. Come to Jesus. He, he washes us clean. You're tired of, of, of being walking around in your own shame. Are you tired of being ashamed of maybe something that you did? Maybe something that, that you said? Well, let me tell you, ask God for forgiveness. Repent today. Repent. I'll leave it there. I'll finish up here. Repent. You know, there's, a, there, there's that very famous sermon, that first sermon that the Apostle Peter gave to a big crowd, right? Right after Jesus descended up into heaven. And you can find that in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39. And I'm going to finish with this verse right here. There, there was, I, I didn't even get to, I only, I only got to one verse. I had like 10 verses that I wanted to share with you guys. But... I feel like this hour that we spent, I think we covered enough. Maybe we can, uh, you know, talk about this a little bit deeper on, on, on next, next week or something. But um, that Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, it takes us to that sermon that Peter stood up and preached. Right after this, the, 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 the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down upon them, gave them each fire pretty much to speak, right? That spirit of God gave them fire, the ability, the, 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 the courage, the boldness to stand up and preach this Jesus Christ that had risen, right? And we hear that in that sermon. Peter, Peter stands up 
and he starts preaching to the crowd crowd of thousands of people now this was this was people this was the same peter that had denied jesus this was the same peter that had said i don't know that man and then the the rooster crowed three times and then Peter, the Bible says that he whipped bitterly, that, that he was so like broken because he knew that he had failed God, right? It's that same Peter. A few days later, after the Spirit of God comes down and gives him this new ability, this new boldness, what is it that happened to Peter that, that made him a new person? Because I can see a new person in this Peter that stood in, in, in the chap in the book of Acts. This was a new Peter. It wasn't that still that 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 fear, that fearful Peter. It wasn't that. You know, uh, every 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 emotion gets to me. Peter cutting off people's ears and you know uh, saying, "Lord God, I'll I'll do this." No, that old Peter stayed behind. That old Peter that was maybe like a little bit rowdy, maybe a little bit quick to to get mad and stuff. That old Peter, we see him transformed completely in this in this book of Acts chapter two, right? Because he gets up and he starts preaching to people and he starts telling everybody that what you're seeing is of God. What you're seeing is the work of God moving around us. And then he goes on to say, they asked him, right? They asked Peter, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do to be saved? What did Peter say? Repent. Repent, each one of you. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. But he uses the word repent. What does the word repent mean? Reper repent literally means if you're walking this way, repenting is turning around completely going the opposite direction. What does that mean? Doing a 360 or doing a 180 or whatever, doing a complete turn and going the opposite way. That means if you used to practice something, you're no longer doing it anymore. If you used to drink, you're no drinking anymore. If you used to smoke, you're not smoking anymore. If you used to cuss a whole a storm up, you're not cussing anymore. You're spitting life into people. You're talking life into people. If you used to hurt people's feelings, now you're trying to help people. If you used to take advantage of people, now you're trying to give people. See, that's the new life that Jesus offers us. It's a satisfying life, you guys. Repent. That's what Peter said. Repent. Turn away from your sin. Stop committing the sin that is in you. Stop giving yourself to that. And you guys, there's nothing more filling than knowing that you're pleasing God. There's nothing more amazing to know that when God sees you he's smiling down on you and I'm gonna leave this word here um, maybe we could continue next week on the same topic you know um, I pray that this was a blessing to you guys um, please leave comments you know let us know let us know if this is helping you guys let us know if this is a uh, or, or you know if you if you'd rather have it in Spanish or whatnot let us know um, I'm gonna ask you guys to please help me pray for these different petitions. There's a, a list here that, you know, we bring these prayers every day because we believe that God hears a, a prayer. God, we believe that God hears us. So I'm gonna ask you guys that are tuning in, help me pray for these different brothers and sisters that are going through different situations, amen? So we begin with um, Ernesto Lopez. Lord God, we bring him before you. We're asking for your mighty hand to come upon him, Lord God. Que lo sanes de cualquier virus, de cualquier mal que haya llegado a su vida, Padre. En el nombre de Jesús lo traemos y te rogamos, Señor. Que tu mano poderosa le sane, Señor, para testimonio de su vida, Señor. Por Gabriel y Berta Mendoza, Señor amado, ahí donde están mis hermanos, Señor. Yo te ruego que inyectes ánimo. manera padre mi dios tú conoces su situación y cómo están padre yo te pido por tomasa señor por sanidad de ese virus señor amado tú conoces dios mío la situación en la que se encuentra mi dios yo te, lo que más te pido señor es que tu fuerza esté ahí señor y que sea tu mano poderosa señor librando a tomasa de cualquier mal de cualquier virus de cualquier estorbo que le haya llegado señor por Santo Tomás Puerto Junior también, Señor, que tú que toques el corazón de este varón, Señor amado, que le, que le inyectes, mi Dios, amor dentro de él, Señor, que limpies cualquier estorbo, cualquier dolencia, cualquier cicatriz, Señor amado, cualquier... Cualquier daño, Señor Jesús, que haya en él, Padre, en el nombre de Jesús te lo pedimos. También te pedimos, Señor, por Javier Ortiz, Señor, 
Que seas tú, Padre, dándole la libertad que Él necesita, Señor amado. Tal vez está mi Dios bajo cadenas. Tal vez está literalmente preso, Señor. O, o, o espiritualmente es preso, Señor. Yo no conozco, Padre. Pero yo lo que te ruego, Señor, es que tu mano poderosa, mi Dios, quebrante y rompe toda atadura, Padre, en el nombre de Jesús. Por Leonardo, por Leonardo Valdés, Señor, te rogamos que seas tú liberándolo de esas ataduras de depresión, Señor. Que inyectes nuevo gozo, Señor. Que inyectes el gozo de tu salvación, mi Dios. Que Él te pueda venir a conocer como un Dios que salva, como un Dios que ama, como un Dios que tiene misericordia. Padre, por María Eliana y Sol, Señor, y por Brenda Sierra Anguiano, Señor, mira mi Dios por nuestras hermanas, Padre. Hoy te pedimos, Señor, que es tu mano poderosa sane cualquier estorbo, cualquier dolencia, cualquier enfermedad por la sangre del Cordero que fue derramada. Yo te pido, mi Dios, que seas tú liberando y sanando cualquier estorbo que haya llegado, mi Dios. Por Anthony Martínez, Señor Jesucristo, ahí donde está, Señor, este varón, yo te ruego, Padre, que quites toda ansiedad de su mente, Señor, que quites toda preocupación de su corazón, Señor, que tú le hagas, Señor amado, caminar más ligero, Padre, quita toda carga de en él, Señor Jesucristo, y que él te pueda dar, mi Dios, entregarte a ti todo lo que él no pueda controlar, Señor, dale la libertad, mi Dios, dale la libertad y la sanidad que él te pide, mi Dios, en el nombre de Jesús, para testimonio de que Dios en el pueblo de Dios yo te pido mi Dios también por Ana Soltero por Ana Palacios Señor Jesucristo te pido mi Dios que ahí donde están mis hermanas Señor inyectes ánimo Padre amado que tus lazos de amor Señor las cubran las fortalezcan Señor que tu mano poderosa mi Dios sane cualquier herida sane cualquier dolencia y cualquier quebrantes, canceles y eches fuera todo mal que haya llegado a su mente y a su corazón, Señor. En el nombre de Jesús, Señor, límpialo, Padre, renueva su mente y su corazón, mi Dios, sana, Señor Jesús, su, su alma, sánalo, Padre. Te pido por nuestra hermana Josefina Molina, Padre, ahí donde está, Señor Pedro Juárez, Conchita Gómez, José Guidel, Joel Orozco, Joel García y Byron, Señor, venimos pidiendo, mi Rey, sanidad por las peticiones de estos, de nuestros hermanos, Señor, de estas personas, Padre, si te conocen, te doy gloria, mi Dios, y te ruego, Padre, como hijos tuyos, Señor, te pido, Padre, que sane sus dolencias, que sane sus enfermedades, que seas tú, mi Dios, su fortaleza en cada uno de ellos, mi Dios, por Penny Weller, Señor, ahí donde se encuentra, Padre, que seas tú, Señor, misericordioso que eres, Padre, extendiendo tu mano, mi Dios, Padre, solo tú conoces, Dios mío, el fin que tienes para esta familia, Señor. Solo tú sabes el propósito que tienes, mi Dios, porque sabemos que todas las cosas le son de bien para aquellos que te aman, mi Dios. Yo así, Padre, pongo a este joven aquí en tus manos, Señor, el... el, el, el el nieto de Penny Weller y te pido Señor por su familia entera Señor que seas tú mi Dios intercediendo por el justo Señor amado que seas tú trayendo justicia Padre amado oh mi Dios y que seas echando fuera toda injusticia Padre todo lo que está dañado mi Dios en el nombre de Jesús por Inés Ávila Señor ahí donde está Padre con esos, con esos ataques yo te ruego Padre eterno que esta persona pueda venir a conocerte para que pueda luchar, Señor amado, con la armadura que tú ofreces, Señor. Que sea tu poder, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús, trayendo todo estorbo al nada, Señor, cancelando toda depresión, toda opresión que haya llegado en el nombre de Jesús, echar afuera, mi Dios, de la vida de Inés Ávila. Por Priscila Aguilera García, mi Dios, una vez más, mi Dios, te venimos pidiendo, mi Rey, que seas tú cancelando, rompiendo toda hechicería, todo, todo, to, toda, todo mal que haya sido contra esta joven en el nombre de Jesús. Cancelamos y reprendemos al enemigo que no tiene parte ni suerte en la vida de Priscila. Para la gloria de Dios. Hoy declaramos a Priscila libre en el nombre de Jesús. Es libre por la sangre del Cordero. Oh sí, Señor, también por la familia Aguilera García, Señor. Que esta familia, mi Dios, pueda someterse y agarrarse de ti, Señor. Aún más en estos tiempos difíciles que están enfrentándose, Señor. 
mi Dios yo te ruego Señor que afirme los pasos del varón de esta casa Señor también de, de, de la madre de esta casa Padre en el nombre de Jesús y que sus hijos también mi Dios todos caminen Padre eterno hacia la salvación hacia ti Jesús de Nazaret yo te pido mi Dios por José Alfredo Miranda, Señor, te pido que tengas misericordia de él, Señor, y que él pueda recibir tu regalo que tú das de, de salvación y de tu Espíritu Santo para que él pueda tomar las decisiones correctas, mi Dios. Por Hilda Chavarría, Señor, ahí donde está, mi Dios, yo te pido que seas tú fortaleciendo a la Padre. Señor, que toque la condición de sus almas, Padre, para que ellos puedan ser sanados del alma primeramente, Señor. Y te puedan dar su vida, mi Dios. Te pedimos por Alejandro Abunader, Señor. Que rompas esas ataduras de droga. Que des nueva vida, Padre, a esta persona que tal vez, Señor Jesús, no ha conocido que es la libertad, mi Dios. Por María de los Ángeles, Señor, te pedimos ahí, mi Dios, donde ella se encuentra fortaleza, mi Dios. Que seas tú, mi Señor Jesucristo, levantando, Señor amado, dando nuevas fuerzas, Señor amado. Que, que nuestra hermana, Señor, pueda seguir perseverando hasta el fin, Señor amado, hasta que tú la llames o hasta que vengas por ella, mi Dios. Te pedimos, te pedimos por Cecilia Ramírez, Señor, fortaleza y guía espiritual, Señor. Por Cecilia López Luna, fortaleza y guía espiritual. Por Cecilia Martínez, Señor, te pedimos fortaleza y, y, y guía espiritual y física, Señor amado. Oh, bendice, Padre eterno, a cada uno de estas peticiones, mi Dios. Fortalece a cada uno, Señor amado, de, de los que te están pidiendo, Señor, que se sienten débiles. Que seas tú, Señor, su fuerza. Que seas tú, mi Dios, el guía que los lleve. Padre eterno, de un triunfo en triunfo y de gloria en gloria, mi Dios, en el nombre de Jesús, Espíritu Santo, oh, ministra estas vidas, Padre. Te pedimos por Cecilia Martínez, mi Dios, ten misericordia, Padre, ahí fortalece la Padre y guía a la Señora y sana de, la, de, toda, de, toda, de todo mal que haya llegado, Señor. Por Blanca Duarte, Señor Jesús, y por Be Beto Jaimes y Yesenia, por Alberto Navarrete, Señor amado, toca los corazones de estas vidas, Padre eterno, te estamos pidiendo, mi Dios, así como alguien pidió por nosotros en algún tiempo, Señor, ten misericordia de estas almas, Padre, y que ellos puedan venir a conocer el gozo de tu salvación, Señor Jesucristo. Te pedimos por Rosa López Mendoza, Señor, y por Rosita Vázquez, Señor, fortalece, Señor amado, a nuestras hermanas, mi Dios, fortalece las Padre. Te pedimos por la familia Ríos, por la familia Moreno, la familia Alvarado, la familia Servín Tapia, la familia Vázquez Modesto, la familia Longoria y la familia Calderón, la la Alicia y Eduardo Sala, Señor amado, ahí también yo incluyo, Señor amado, a mi hijo, Señor, a mis padres, Señor, a estas familias, Padre eterno, ten misericordia de ellas, Padre amado, y que ellos puedan venir a conocerte, Padre, como Dios y Salvador, que ellos puedan venir a conocer el gozo de tu salvación, Jesús, ya que en ti hay gozo, hay plenitud, hay hay, hay todo lo que podemos desear, Señor amado, que tú puedas venir, Señor, y que ellos te puedan abrir el corazón, Señor Jesús, para que tú entres y, y cenes con ellos, Señor. También te pedimos, Señor, por la familia Hernández Sánchez, Señor. Ahí perfecciona, Señor, la obra que has comenzado. Que seas tú fortaleciendo, Señor Jesucristo, y, y haciendo, Señor, haciendo la obra perfecta que tú has comenzado en la vida de mi hermano Guillermo y mi hermano cubriendo con tu preciosa sangre y echando fuera todo mal que, es, que haya llegado a esta familia también, Señor. Por Manuel Panjo, Señor, ten misericordia, Señor amado. Ten misericordia, Padre. Él te pide perdón, Señor Jesucristo. Él te pide perdón, Señor, y que le abra las puertas, Señor amado, de ese trabajo, Señor. Solo tú conoces, Señor amado, lo que Él te pide, la condición que Él se encuentra, Señor. Yo solo te pido, mi Dios. Que tu misericordia extiendas tus lazos, Señor. Extiendas tu mano, Señor amado. Y lo levantes y le des, Señor Jesucristo. Esa nueva vida que todos anhelamos, que todos deseamos, Señor. Conocerte a ti, mi Dios, y dejar lo antiguo, Padre. Tú nos estás llamando, Señor Jesús, a ser una nueva persona, a ser una nueva gente. A dejar las cosas antiguas, a dejar las cosas que antes no nos aprovechaban para bien, Señor. Bendice, Señor Jesús, a todo aquel que escuchó este mensaje, Señor, 
en el nombre de Jesús yo te ruego Padre que toque los corazones de los jóvenes, que toque los corazones de las jóvenes Señor amado y que tú mi Dios nos des una nueva revelación de quién eres tú Padre eterno, en el nombre de Jesús yo te doy gracias Padre por este tiempo, gracias mi Dios Gracias por mi pastor, Señor amado. Ahí donde está, yo te pido, Señor, que perfecciones también la obra que has comenzado, Señor. Que renueves esa cintura, Señor. Que restaures, Padre eterno, todo lo que haya sido dañado en la cintura de mi pastor, Señor amado. Y que lo levantes con poder, con, con, con unción, con palabras, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús. Con libertad, mi Dios. A toda la familia pastoral también yo te pido, Señor, que tu presencia permanezca sobre este hogar, Señor. En el nombre nombre de Jesús te damos gracias Padre, gracias por el hermoso sol que nos permite Señor, gracias Padre eterno por todas las bendiciones que nos rodean Señor, en el nombre de Jesús te damos gloria y honra, amén y amén, que el Señor Jesucristo esté con cada uno de ustedes, amén, Dios les bendiga.